So we have the Hermit coming up. Some of you maybe we have Virgo energy, we have Aries energy here. Of course, the signs don't own the cards, they just lend their characteristics. But your underlying energy this week is really trying to figure out, I think, how you feel about something, how you're going forward on something. We have two very spiritual energies coming up, which is the Hermit and the Hanged Man. Now, not a lot happens when these kinds of energies come up. But on the surface, not a lot happens. But I kind of feel, finally, you guys are facing a decision or a choice that's needed to be made for a while, but you haven't made it. I don't think you've known where to take it or what to do with it. And it may just have been about a new beginning. You know, that, you know, sometimes we can have that plan of like, I think I'd like to date, but you don't know how to get started. <laughs> like, I don't really want to online date. I don't really, where am I going to meet people? It's that kind of thing. You know, that's just one example. Or if it's for work, you know, that you know you're not happy where you are, but you don't know how to change it up. Nothing is really appealing to you. I don't want to live where I live, but where do I go instead? You know, I like this town, but do I like this town? It's that kind of thinking. So kind of hashing out, and it's how you feel, and you're doing it the right way. There's nothing wrong with this energy. The hermit is all about the answers that lie within. Too many times I think a lot of people, they look outside of themselves for answers, but the answers will never come from outside. The external always reflects what's going on internally. So if we're in chaos inside, the external is going to um, mirror that back to us. And the hermit, wherever he goes, there's never anything around him. There's always a star in his lantern that's a star of hope. So there is hope here. But you're kind of shedding light on, okay, what does my hope look like? And where am I taking it? What am I doing with this? Now, this may be taking a step back and, you know, I think Capricorns, a lot of people around you may be wondering what the hell's going on with you this week. I think deceptively on the surface, you're going to look very calm or, you know, as if you've just noped out, or I can't be bothered with this or so, that kind of energy you may portray to other people. But internally, there is a hell of a lot going on. Um in a really great way. I mean, not to put it down. And I know we, a lot of people, they want excitement every week. They want excitement or, you know, the latest episode and the drama that is their life. But this is one of those weeks where you're setting it up for the weeks to come or the months to come even. Two, you've got three major arcana energies. It's a big week in terms of energies. But I just don't think that will be reflected on the surface. And it feels important to say that. So at the heart of your reading, we have the hanged man. You're seeing things from a different perspective. Now, this may be, this may be because he looks externally, right? So maybe that's why you're going inside to see, well, how do I feel about this? If externally things have changed, if the world feels, feels like it's flipped upside down, and trust me, a lot of people are feeling like that at the moment. If that's what it feels like to you, that, you know, the world's upside down. I thought this was the job that I wanted, but it's not fulfilling me. I thought this was the relationship that I wanted, but it's not fulfilling me. If you're in that kind of a place... The answers do come this week. The answers do come. They come from within. But that's, I think that's the first step always, right? To know how we're feeling about something. And the thing is, you haven't. You haven't been looking at this. No judgment, but we have the two of swords coming up. For the longest time, Capricorn, this is what you've been doing. Not looking at what's external to you. So not doing the hangman, not trying to gain a new perspective on it. But why? Because you've been trying to keep the balance. You know, you've been trying to keep the status quo. Maybe there have been people going nuts around you. Maybe there's chaos in whatever area there is, you know, relationships, family, home, whatever. And you're the one that's been trying to keep the balance, but you can't do that forever. This person has two swords crossed in front of her chest. She doesn't want to get hurt. You know, she doesn't want to have to deal with the fallout of this. She's like, I'll just hold my two swords here. It's fine. And swords are our thoughts, our beliefs, our ideas, how we communicate them. What is it? Have you not been able to communicate whatever it is? It, this can be conflicts with people. This can be internal conflicts, two conflicting truths that we have within us. And we know we can't keep both of them. We need one sword, not two here. Our sword of truth. Now, the card that comes up in the past, that can be last week, last month, last year. All it means is where does it, it how have, have we arrived in the present where we are now? Well, out of this indecision, out of this holding it down, trying to keep the state, the balance, there's been a new spark of something else. I think you want something for yourself, Capricorn. The Ace of Wands is a very personal, I mean, all the Aces are. They are they're us. They're where we begin. It's the I in the cycle. Where? What am I bringing to this? 
This is your passion, your creativity, your excitement, your enthusiasm, something new that you want to begin or re-begin. Like it can be an existing situation. You want to bring fresh energy into it. But with the hermit set above it, that kind of even amplifies the kind of meanness of this. Like, I, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. I don't want to hold it down, keep the balance in the situation anymore. Let it burn almost. That's with the Ace of Wands coming up here. Because you see things differently. And it's very telling that the hanged man is here. Very telling. Because the hanged man is all about, yes, waiting. Things can be stuck in limbo. But I don't know who I was saying this to. I, I think it was Sagittarius or someone. But, you know, there's never a wait and see energy in the tarot. There's always something going on. Even though, you know, um, outwardly it looks like there's inaction. There's plenty of action going on inside. Where you're seeing things differently. Things means, and I talked about this in the outro actually, um, where I kind of feel like we're taking ourselves out on test drive. Like we're brand new cars now. We've been upgraded and all sorts of stuff's happened to us. And we're seeing how we fit in into the lives, the current, the lives that we have. The Ace of Wands can be a new project, like I said, a new job, a new relationship even. Very fiery, very passionate though. A lot of creativity and it, it calls, I mean, the Ace of Wands is beautiful energy anyway. But with the Hermit sat above it, this is, it's very, very, it comes from a very deep place within you. This might have been something that you've always wanted to do, but you've always had to keep the balance. Or maybe there would have been a conflict with this. Or, you know, you've wanted to do something with the relationship, but you were, you feared an argument with your partner. Or at work, you know, you wanted to suggest a new project, but you always thought, well, you know, I don't want to, I don't want the conflict. I don't want what people are going to say to me. I don't think you care about that right now. You see things differently. And so it's an amazing week to start something new, especially the initial stages where we're planning, um, taking our first steps. You know, we have the, the eureka moments, the, um, wow, this would be, you know, that muse-like energy of a spark of inspiration. What are you going to do with that? Well, bloody hell, you're off and running with it. We have the emperor coming up next. Um, and he's in charge, right? He's the guy in charge. Now, the emperor always gives two messages and it's going to be one of the two that applies to you. And I don't think the first one's going to apply to very many people, which is don't be so stubborn. I don't think you're being stubborn. You've been doing a lot of reflection, uh, you know, inward reflection, self-reflection, figuring out what the hell's going on here. What do I truly want? What's my truth? What's the one sword I want to keep, not the two that I've been kind of trying to balance? This person doesn't want to see, but this person is looking at everything from a different perspective. So I kind of feel with the emperor coming up here, this is about you taking control, taking charge. Now, for some of you, this is a straight up promotion. The emperor is the boss, the authority figure. And it's giving you that opportunity to get into a more of a leadership role because the emperor is the leader, right? But like I said, he's the father, the authority figure. It's stepping up. Now, the emperor isn't just a pushy individual who does what he wants. He does what he wants to do, but he does it for the good of everyone, for his kingdom, for the empire that he's running. That's why he makes those tough decisions. But it kind of feels like with the Ace of Wands here, whatever the spark is, you're in control. You feel in charge of this. Like, you know, you it's not getting away from you. And that's going to be that's going to be an amazing feeling, especially after the Two of Swords. Well, the Two of Swords is that that's um the illusion of being in control. You're actually struggling holding those two of swords and you're looking at something. But it's maintaining the illusion. There's no illusion here now. The very real energy of being in control. And it comes from, you know why? Because you see things differently. You see, and when we kind of feel lost, or you know, the world's kind of flipped upside down around us, we don't know where we fit into that place. And I think that's where you, where you guys are. You're figuring out where you fit in all this. Or rather, it might be to do with people. How does this job fit in with my life? Like I might have been working 60 hours a week. Do I still want to be doing that? When I want to start up a hobby or another business or, you know, is this relationship the right one for me? If I want to go forward, where's the passion? Where's the excitement? You're looking at things in different ways and it's the flip side of whatever you looked at before. Now, what's the advice? The advice is the six of pentacles. So this is about balance. It is about restoring balance, but this is a much healthier balance than this. Remember, this was false balance because she's not looking and she's just trying to protect herself. This can be a fear of conflict, you know, that kind of whole kind of conflict avoidance thing. I don't want to make a decision. I don't want to have to deal with this. 
but something seems to like flick like that just with this energy that comes in this very strong powerful fiery energies that has come in and it might just be that you've gone to sleep one night woken up the next day and thought yeah you know what sod this this is not what i'm doing so this is actual balance not the false balance that was represented here this is where whatever we give out we get back in re return so the advice here is especially in relationships right are you the one that's giving all the, are you doing all the giving? Someone else doing all the taking? And it's, it's a general reading. So the energies can play both ways. Somebody else might feel this way. Somebody else might feel this way. Now, I will say this. If you've been dealing with someone who's the emperor energy, they're overbearing. They call all the shots. And trust me, sometimes the people that call the shots, they're not the loudest ones. They're the quiet ones. They're the ones that just, you know, um, that kind of silent protest. <laughs> they just won't deal with things. You know, and they actually hold the power in a relationship. Power dynamics seem to switch here. They flip here. You have an opportunity to step up and take control of this situation. But even then, with the Six of Pentacles coming up with this, that's then a balance of power. It's not an exchange of power, if that makes sense. Because it just feels like things have not been balanced. Because balance is a big thing that's coming in here. It's almost like your ideas, your passions, your creativity, it's been ignored. And why was it ignored? Sorry to say this to you, Capricorn. Why was it ignored? Because you were ignoring it. But now you're not. You're, this is all about well, how do I feel? What's going on with me? What do I see? What does this mean for me? What I see around me? It might have had meaning before. Does it still have meaning? No. So that's the advice here, the balance, the true balance that comes in. Are you getting back what you give out? The hours that you work, are you being compensated fairly for it? Are your relationships, you know, balanced? In any relationship, whether it's, I don't know, siblings, um, families, friends, lovers, is there a balance here? Are you only in charge of 50% of the relationship? Are you being expected to carry the whole thing? That's a big thing for you this week. And I think the answers finally come. Why? Because there's something that you want to do now. And you're going to see who supports you and who doesn't. The ones that support you, hold on to them. They're, they're your people. The ones that are like, well, Capricorn, weren't you supposed to do this for me? Yeah, you don't need those people. You don't need those people. Because it's your time now. You've got something that you want to do. You've got something that you want to start, that you want to express. Love endures. Love does not give up or lose faith. Love is hopeful and withstands every situation now I'm gonna say this to you if this is about a, a romantic situation for you and love can refer to anything right whatever we love if you've been avoiding something that you love I don't know it sounds strange you're thinking who the hell avoids things that they love people, people do you know we have a responsibility to something else or it can be overwhelming you know we want to be with someone but then we're like oh I also have to work I don't have time for this in my life right now whatever it is that love doesn't go away. And I think for some of you, that's what it is. You're getting to pursue what it is that you love now. What gets you passionate? What gets you fired up? It's not about being responsible now or keeping the balance. That's what I don't like about this. The two of swords, it, you can't have two truths like that. I mean, every single person has their own individual truth. And I've made a whole video on this, truth and free will. So you can have a, you can watch that if you haven't already done so, but you know, we all have our individual truths. But this is, they're not two truths. They're opposing truths here. And the fact that she doesn't want to see what they are, that's very telling. It's because you're going to have to pick one. But you pick one. And it comes from you. It comes from inside you. That's the kind of, I know I keep kind of harping on about that internal stuff and the you stuff. It's because it's so big. Because you don't do that. You've not taken the time to do that. This is very much about what is it that I want now? And even going against your own expectations, like you've set yourself a whole own kind of playbook of, oh, uh, this is how I do things, or this is what I, you know, this is my priority list. Your priorities are changing. When you get two very massive spiritual energies like that, and the thing is, it actually restores your power. It makes you feel more empowered. This taking a step back, which most people don't like. They think it's counterintuitive, right? But it isn't. Taking a step back actually helps you to see more of it. And I think you're going to figure out that there's something that you love that you didn't, you've not allowed yourself to go for it because you were too busy doing this. 
maybe that you go for it now. <laughs> okay, so we have Thinker coming up. And what I like about the Thinker card is it does tell you to take things at face value. You know, if someone says something to you, take them at their word. Don't overthink it. Because sometimes we can do that when Thinker shows up. And think about it. <laughs> Just think about it. But we have the Hermit coming up. This is, what do you think? Don't worry about what other people think. Sometimes when people don't talk to us, you know, we fill in that kind of dead air. Like we fill in the silence with our own thoughts. And this is saying, look, someone says something to you, you. You just take that as their truth. Don't worry about their truth. You worry about your own. What do you love? What do you still love? What are you feeling passionate about? What's going on inside you? What's, what do you see around you? Because thinker does have a tendency to kind of try to fill in, especially when someone's not talking to us. You know, we try to fill in the gaps ourselves. Oh gosh, here we go. <sighs> Dearest you, let us ask Let us ask you, are you looking for happiness outside of your everyday moment to moment experience, thinking you will find happiness out there someday? So many go chasing a magic it out there, but it never could be found there. So we want to share a secret that shouldn't be a secret. You are pure joy. What made you is pure joy. And every time you wake up and even when you sleep, you have joy waiting to be expressed inside you. Joy and happiness and fullness come from doing joy, being joy, knowing it, cultivating it and lighting it in your heart so you can share it. You must know this so when the time comes, you'll be fully free and your joyful being and actions will turn you into a beacon of starlight. Look within and be joyful, even for tears and loss, for they mean you have lived, really lived. Jump into it all and love every minute. We all love you like crazy over here. And it, that's, this kind of very much is the essence of your reading. It's about you. What makes you happy? And we don't have the Nine of Cups. We don't have the Star Card. We don't have any of this kind of wishy-washy. I don't know, mean to play them down, but you know that whole kind of, this is not that. This is before that even. You know, before you can wish, before you can decide which star you want to follow for guidance, before you can manifest anything. This is that, well, what do I even want to manifest? What do I need at this time? What do I want? What do I feel? You've taken it really down to the basics, to the bare bones of a situation, which is amazing. And what you will find is that you love something. Your ability to love endures with love endures. And that's where the spark comes in. When you remove all the rest of the clutter, where you remove the blindfolds, where you remove the conflict and the arguments and different people's truths and stuff, when you focus just in on your own passion, creativity, what it is that you want, that's when you're back in the driver's seat. And then you know what you're giving out, what you have to give out to the world, and then you know what will get back to you. And that's where you have true balance. 